Morning, guys. Um, I'm probably going to start with um, an introduction into Zadara, but we've, we've heard some great comments around the floor this morning. Um, have your cake and eat it. Um, you know, the future of containers. Chris talking about history and, and futures. And really, I think what Zadara is trying to do is give you your cake and eat it in public cloud, private cloud, and really give you a lot of the features that are really missing in the public cloud today, really where Zadara has come from is we've provided a virtual private storage array environment that we've been running in some of our key partners such as uh, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Toshiba as an OEM, Telecity we, we announced a, a recent relationship to roll out across Europe, Dimension Data really where we started in their, their cloud environment, in their opsource environment. So today we've, we've taken $20 million worth of funding and really we're probably our worst enemy in that you know, we don't really promote ourselves well enough, certainly in, in Europe, and that's changing. Um, and you know, I think you'll see a lot more from Zadara over this next 12, 18 months. And I want to talk about some of the reasons why. So what we've done is we've taken what everybody is familiar with in terms of a storage array, and we've abstracted it. We've virtualized it. So instead of going and buying a physical piece of tin and saying, I'm going to attach that to my cloud, what we've done is we've said, we're going to give you all of the capabilities that you're familiar with, such as replication, snapshots, clones, mirrors, <laughs> migration. And we're going to package this into an environment where you can decide what you want to run against what workload. So if you want to run SAP and you want SSDs, then create a VPSA that's going to manage and run that workload. Provide complete isolation, either on a per tenant basis or on a per application basis. So in this environment, let's take its AWS, for example. Customer one wants to run his SQL application as a failover cluster. Those of you that know AWS will be aware that EBS volumes, S3, do not allow you to run failover clusters. With Zadara in that mix, we've enabled you to run SQL failover clusters. Yes, it's going back in terms of running what is now classed as legacy, but legacy, as, as we've already heard, is not going to go away today, and it's not going to go away tomorrow. Okay? There's going to be a transition. So running those applications, NFS, SIFs, iSCSI, block volumes, is really what's key to enabling that transition to the cloud. We run it as a service using commodity <coughs> hardware. How do we do it? What we do is we have our concept of storage nodes. And when we create a VPSA, we create a, a virtual machine image that we map physical resources to in terms of CPU, RAM cache, networking, and physical drives. So we actually map physical drives to each VPSA. This is how we handle that QoS issue. Because if you're sharing all of those drives and all of those resources across multiple tenants, then the disk, as we know, is the slowest component. So by actually providing a mapping capability, you can actually map an application to a workload and provide a sustained quality of service. This is something different to what traditionally is, is happening. If you take a standard dual controller array subsystem, you're mapping the resources that are available in that controller head. What happens when you need to go beyond those resources? You buy again. Okay? What Zadara is saying is, don't buy anything. Rent it. Take it as a service, scale up, scale down, in terms of CPU resources, dish resources, on a per hour basis. And this is the same whether it's on your premise, in a co-location partners facility, or even in the public cloud. What does it look like? Okay, from, from our perspective, when we create those virtual controllers, we create an SSD cache layer, which is distributed across our nodes. We enable you then to select what workload do you need. Do you need SSD? Do you need SAS? Do you need SATA? What's the application workload? Match it. Okay? Run your applications based on those workloads. OK? 
Okay. In terms of the physical architecture, what have we done? We've built on the shoulders of giants. Yeah? If you look at what VMware have done for compute, we're trying to do the same thing for storage. Virtualize it, abstract it, and run those workloads based on business requirements. Okay? So we have this concept of front-end network, access to the host. And I take exactly everything that you took on board that you said this morning about containers and containerization because abstracting the storage and being able to map that up to an application layer, I think absolutely is, is the future of where storage will go. So being able to take those resources, deliver that quality of service, I think is absolutely key to the future of, of storage. So what are we doing today? Well, we've taken really the best of what's out there in terms of hardware technology, okay? But we're not married to that technology. What we've done is we've worked very closely with the likes of Mellanox, and we're delivering an ISA um, protocol stack that's delivering microsecond latencies. So if you take the traditional storage subsystem, then you've had choices, iSCSI or fiber channel. And as we're seeing from a lot of service providers, they don't want to run multiple networks. They want a single unified platform. So how do you get to deliver the performance level of fiber channel using Ethernet? Well, ISA provides an answer to that, okay? And we're working very closely with VMware to deliver ISA natively into the kernel with Mellanox to drive those IO performances up. Now, the benefit of that is if you take that in conjunction with the Zadara VPSA technology, you can actually map those workloads directly to the, the compute environment and use a very high-speed network, okay? You could supplement that. You know, you can use some of the, the other technologies that are out there, such as Pernix, to actually provide even lower latencies if you want. There go. Oh. So, in terms of what is missing in terms of most of the public cloud environments today is we're talking about speeds and feeds all the time. It's Forrest Gump. You know, it's how fast can I run? But that's not necessarily what business needs, okay? We still need those enterprise features that we've come to know and love from our enterprise storage. So we want snapshots, we want clones. We want them to be defined by a policy. We want to define that policy. We don't want the storage vendor to define that policy because he doesn't understand what our business is, okay? So we need application integration, yeah? It's key. There's no point having a snapshot-based technology that's completely crash consistent if you can't recover it simply and easily. So we've built the capabilities such as VSS hardware integration, and we're doing that in Amazon today. You know, so you take a snapshot on Zadara inside an Amazon environment, it's assisted and it's consistent. Okay? You can then replicate that to multiple clouds. So we're talking about taking a snapshot, running in AWS, mirroring that to Azure, and then enabling an Azure compute to pull that up. So we're enabling that multiple cloud replication management, move your workload based on your requirements when you need to run it. Okay? So we talked about, Chris talked about the, the biggest problem that we face in storage, migration. How do we do it? Well, traditionally what we do is we go and buy an array from NetApp or EMC, and three years down the line, we go and do the same again. And we have to migrate it, and it's a pain in the backside. If you're taking it as a service, such as Zadara, and you're providing a capability whereby you don't have to go out and procure three months, six months, three years worth of storage up front, but it's actually provided by the service provider as you need it. And they're managing that migration of adding new nodes in and retiring the old nodes. You haven't got that migration headache. Oops. So in terms of really what Zadara is able to offer today is via our cloud partners and our ecosystem is any-to-any -any replication. So if you're in Amazon, you can replicate to Azure. If you're in Amazon, you can replicate to Telecity. If you're in Amazon, you can replicate to your own on-premise. 
Yeah? You, you decide. Where do you want to move your workloads and when do you want to move them? Okay? The real difference here is this is cloud costs. So you pay per hour for what you're consuming, not what's on the floor. In terms of what that means, what we're saying is take this as a service, the same service in your own data center, in your co-location partners data center, in the public cloud, pay for it in the same way, and you don't have to go through the myriad of different products and services that we've had to go through in IT for the last 20, 30 years. Buying storage arrays, buying gateways, trying to map them, it's too complex. Simplify it. How do we do that? Well, we're providing that ecosystem whereby, you know, using the network capabilities, using our partners such as Telecity with Cloud IX to connect to AWS, Dimension Data, <coughs> Azure, your own private cloud, okay, all across a sim single fabric, globally. This is something that we're seeing as an emergence, okay, within our customer base. Customers are saying, okay, I need to protect my environment. I'm going to take Zadara, I'm going to put it on premise, and I'm going to replicate to the public cloud. But I'm going to take the snapshots, and I'm going to enable the public cloud, okay, especially if it's a VMware environment into, into some of our partners, where they're replicating the whole VM image. They're able to bring up the VM image on a uh, use by use basis and then replicate back any changes. So they can actually do this testing while the, the primary data is still live. Because of the snapshot technology that we're deploying, you don't have to break those mirrors. So we're enabling disaster as a recovery to be far simpler without putting the primary data at risk. We've also developed some additional capabilities. Okay? We're recognizing that more and more customers want geographical replication or metro data. So Zadara has introduced a capability called multi-zone HA, where you can actually put half of the Zadara infrastructure in one data center and half in another. Okay? Basically, put your compute across those two locations as well and enable seamless failover. In terms of management, so we talk about ease and provisioning and the simplification of, of storage. We've already solved that problem in that it's a nice, simple catalog. Go to the Zara management console, create a new VPSA, select the engine size, what do you want? Size of CPU, how many drives, how much cache? Create that VPSA. You can do other things within that um, environment. You can hibernate your VPSA, so if it's a DR environment, you can hibernate that VPSA and just bring it up via APIs just when you need to, to enable that replication. Again, it helps you to control costs. The back end, we've done all of the management, all of the provisioning, all of the, the heavy lifting. Because we provide this as a service, we're providing firmware upgrades, back end management, metering, billing, all of it is built in. These are not add-on products. You get everything that's in the wrapper, okay? So, you know, if we, want to add additional nodes, we simply rack additional nodes. We hit a single button that says import this node. All of those resources are available. So suddenly when it comes to scaling, we're not limited by a pair of controller heads. As we add scale, we add compute, we add disk, we add networking, we add QoS. Okay? So it enables us to continue to scale based on customer requirements. So we don't say to a customer, what do you need three years, five years from now? We ask them what they need now. What do they need today? We're not saying rip out everything that you've already done, coexist, and then over time migrate onto the Zadara platform. And we'll enable you to scale based on your requirements, not what your requirements in three years, five years are. Management interface, really nice, simple. Everybody who's familiar with storage arrays, you know, creation of raid groups, pools, volumes, snapshots, replication, all of those capabilities. The key difference, I would say, from Zadara's perspective is we've enabled the cloud from day one. We've built everything around an API. So everything that we do, we build an API first, and that enables you to run 
automation, scripting at the front end and at the back end based on your requirements as and when you need them. Okay? So in terms of that whole ecosystem of coexisting with VMware, coexisting with OpenStack, coexisting with any emerging technology, we can very simply integrate into that. And because we've highly virtualized that environment, then the future is very simple for us to add new technologies and new capabilities as and when they become available. So we're not going to have to go and retrofit, you know, oh, well, we're tied to this particular piece of hardware. We've, we've solved that problem. Any questions? Do you support any encryption functions? We, we provide a, a per VPSA encryption, so the keys are owned by the customer. Okay, they're stored in RAM in the controllers, so we don't have access to them. Okay, only the customer. And key management? Key management, we leave to the customer. Okay, especially in a, in a public cloud environment, you want each customer to manage their own keys. Does Zotara have their own infrastructure installed in each of their partner? So, so we provide the hardware and the software as a service into our, into our partners. So into Amazon, we're attached on Direct Connect, or into Microsoft on Express Route, or Express Route, depending on where in the world you come from, um, and into our key partners, such as Dimension Data, Telecity, they're actually located in their, in their data centers, and they offer that as a service on a pay-as-you-go model. On-premises, obviously, talking about migrations from EMC and NetApp, um, any enterprise would be panicking like crazy about performance. What's your on-premises performance characteristics? Is it scale up or scale out? Two Both. nodes? So, so again, from, from that scale up, scale out capability, our minimum requirement is two nodes so that we can main, maintain HA. Um, but then we just keep adding nodes as a, as a scale out um, environment. The, the VPSAs themselves can scale from you know, taking two CPUs, four gig of RAM, right the way through to 10 cores and 32 gig of RAM, but you just keep adding VPSAs on a scale out, so that enables you to get beyond the limits of a, of a pair of controllers. And in terms of billing, this is obviously a very cloudy model. Do you bill by storage consumed or also uh, performance and IOPS, and then do you manage the hardware so you would ship more SSDs, more spinning disks, more nodes, or whatever to satisfy that? Yeah, so, so we manage the hardware and the software from, from a back-end perspective. The customer manages the front-end in terms of creating RAID groups and, and mapping those to servers. So there's, there's a, a cooperation between us and the customer in terms of the, the management operations. Um, but in terms of you know, how we build, we build based on the controller engine type, so how many cores, how much RAM, and also the physical drive, and it's per hour. So if you spin it up for 24 hours, and then you spin it down, you'll, you'll pay for 24 hours, not a month, not a year. Okay, true cloud dynamics, both on-premise and off. <laughs>